Corn harvest has started here in the state, and we thought we'd start the day by taking a look at exactly what it takes for this crop to get to maturity. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to speak with extension cropping specialist Chad Gotze about that topic. Now let's talk about the challenges of corn. You say this is a lot more difficult crop to pollinate than say wheat or any of our normal grains. It is, it is. Uh, corn is, is kind of unique uh, for most of the or most popular grains we consider, uh, soybeans, wheat, uh, th and things like that. The, uh, the male and female uh, reproductive parts of the, of the corn plant are in different areas. Uh, the, ma uh, the tassel uh, being the male parts, uh, and then the, uh, the ear shoot or the ear being the female part. Uh, so that the pollen, pollen from the tassel has got to get to the, uh, to the ear shoot or the silks uh, to get good pollination. Uh, and, then, and of course with our environment in Oklahoma, uh, there's a lot of things that can, that can go wrong at the wrong time. All right, so we've got to get the pollen from here down to here. And how do we tell if we've got good, uh, good pollination going? Okay, uh, well typically um, uh, the uh, tassel will fully emerge and then about, uh, about three days prior to, uh, to silks coming out of the end of the year, okay. uh, it'll start dropping pollen. And usually pollen drop occurs in the mid-morning hours, somewhere between 9 and 11 a.m. Okay. Uh, and that all depends on dew. Uh, the, as soon as the dew dries off the tassel, uh, the pollen will drop. And then once it gets too dry, uh, it'll stop dropping for that day. So it's pretty clever and, it, and it's well regulated, uh, but it is, it is challenging. Um, uh, to get the pollen grain from, from the, the tassel to, to the silks. Uh, and actually once the pollen grain lands on the silks, uh, a pollen tube will form uh, and run down to, to the uh, ovule, which is basically the, the individual kernel. Right. Um, and, and that's fertilization that has occurred in, uh, once that happens. Basically about 10 days, 10 days after you start to see silks and the, and the tassels emerge, uh, come out and you should start to see uh, blisters, uh, at least blisters being formed, and this corn is a little further along. Uh, but you can see this ear has, has uh, very good pollination, uh, all the kernels formed. Um, so that's one way. You should start to see, about 10 days, you should start to see small blisters uh, where the silks were attached. Um, another way uh, is to basically watch the silks themselves. Uh, about 24 hours after, after pollination, uh, the, the silks should detach. Uh, from the ovule, ovules, which uh, whereas the kernel will form, okay. Uh, so they should easily pull uh, pull out uh, and, and be uh, be detached. Uh, if the silks are still attached, that means you didn't have good pollination. And I assume a, just a cross sampling throughout your field would be a good idea. It is, you know, a random a random sample, a plant here, and you know, walk 50 yards, 100 yards, and check again. Okay. Now, is there anything critical we need to be talking about in terms of timing and making sure this happens the, the right time of year? Really, we're you know we're we're really at the uh, the uh, the needs of, of Mother Nature there as far as as getting ideal conditions for pollination. Um, you know, really any stresses can can hinder uh, pollination. Uh, drought stress is the big one. Uh, okay. This year we've been pretty fortunate in most areas not to have a lot of drought stress during pollination. Uh, but pollination or drought stress at the wrong time can hinder the synchronization. Uh, I'd mentioned that the, po the pollen will start dropping a few days before and last a few days later than the silks emerging. Right. Uh, so if, if anything ha messes that synchronization up, uh, any stresses that you're just uh, not going to get the right pollination. Yep. And, and we saw that a lot last year uh, with a little bit of drought stress and, and heat stress just at the wrong time. Uh, but say you know you're looking at your crop right now and you're realizing there's just not enough going on here. I'm not getting the yield I want. What can you do to, to make sure that next year you, you have a better result? So, some of the things that, that really the only management strategies we have for, you know, to, to have any effect at, at all on pollination is planting date. Uh, typically for planting early season corn, we want to plant as early as possible to get this pollination uh, occurring during cooler, uh, less stressful time of the, of the year. It's too much heat that's going to kill this. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, anything, uh, you know, a blast of, of 95 degrees or, t uh, or higher uh, can, can just sterilize a pollen pretty much instantly. So. And that's, is that all day or is that at that particular time uh, of the drop? Uh, good, good question. That is particularly at that point uh, of the drop. So, so that 9 to 11 in the morning you want to be below 95. Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. very good. Uh, any, any varieties that can make a difference? Or? Um, you know, hybrid selection or variety selection is important. Um, the, 
You know, really, uh, there there may be certain hybrids that that will perform better, um, but you do you want to you want to diversify uh, because we have ne seen some some differences as far as pollination in those in those uh, stress periods. Uh, but it really depends on the year. So diversification uh, and also with planting date, diversify with planting date a little bit. Okay. Uh, Just kind of hedge your bets selection. against the weather. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Well, we'll be keep, keeping an eye on it. We uh, appreciate your time today. All right. Thank you.